Okay, so I'm going to present on uh, cerebellar hypoplasia today. Um, so cerebellar hypoplasia, it is a condition in which the cerebellum is smaller than normal or not completely developed. Um, it's most common in, uh, as far as domestic animals go, most common in kittens slash cats once they get older. Um, and speaking of getting older, uh, cerebellar hypoplasia, it is non-progressive. Uh, so it does not get better or worse with age. However, it can look like it gets better because as the animal grows with cerebellar hypoplasia, they will kind of learn to adapt to their condition. Um, there's no known cure for it, but supportive care can lead to a normal lifespan of the animal. Um, the symptoms of cerebellar hypoplasia uh, it can be noticed usually during infancy in young animals, but uh, it can be noticed right after birth. Um, as soon as most of the animals will start, you know, getting up, starting to use their legs. And if an animal has cerebellar hypoplasia, it's probably not going to be getting up as quick as the others. Um, animals affected with cerebellar hypoplasia usually will struggle to stand, walk, and perform other basic movements. Um, in less severe cases, the animal may just seem disoriented. And that is a picture right there of a uh, kitten that has cerebellar hypoplasia. And if you look at it, you'll notice that it's leaning to its left side, um, so its balance is off. And then it also, it, they usually don't keep their head straight, um, just because they don't really have a grasp of left, right, up, down, um, it's, it's hard for them to kind of grasp those concepts because of their not developed cerebellum. Um, so <laughs> how are the animals affected? The cerebellum controls voluntary movements such as balance, posture, and coordination. Basically, these animals just can't make their bodies do what they want them to do, because, uh, which causes difficulty in movement. Um, the condition is usually caused by some sort of virus in the mother during pregnancy, which causes malnutrition to the developing fetuses. Uh, this slows or stops the development of the cerebellum. So uh, cerebellar hypoplasia is not directly caused by the virus. Um, the virus will usually cause malnutrition to the fetus, which then is the actual cause of cere cerebellar hypoplasia. Um, it's not something that you could like treat with antibiotics because of a virus or medicine or anything like that. So are you saying it's blood flow from the placenta to the fetus? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, blood flow, nutrients. Uh, basically, the, the fetus just isn't getting what it needs to fully develop. Um, so special care uh, is usually necessary with animals that have cerebellar hypoplasia. Um, the special care is dependent upon the severity um, some animals can lead semi-normal lives, and others will need supportive care for most aspects of their life. Um, wheelchairs, higher walls of litter box to avoid misses, uh, heavier food and water dishes to avoid spilling, and that's mostly, uh, like I said earlier, it's because they don't have the control over their body that a normal animal would have. Um, so I have a guinea pig that actually has cerebellar hypoplasia, um, his name is Mr. Wiggles because he wiggles when he moves. Um, and he can't pull hay out of a feeder. Um, that's just one of the things we found out was that when we put the hay in the feeder, he wasn't able to get it out just because he couldn't make the precise movement of grabbing a single piece of hay and pulling it out and then eating it. So you have to put his hay on the ground so that he can just pick it up and eat it. He can't pull it out and then eat it. Um, and then he also sometimes throws his bowl while he's trying to eat. Um, and that'll just be because he'll think that he's about to grab a piece of food, he'll miss, he'll grab the edge of the bowl, and then he'll yank like he's trying to pull the piece of food up and he'll end up just throwing his bowl everywhere. Um, so uh, animals with cerebellar hypoplasia, in particular kittens um, and cats, they are bad candidates for declaws. <coughs> Um, because the loss of grip is usually too much for them to overcome. Uh, so, as, as you know, claws help uh, cats to both balance and climb, and these animals are already uh, at a disadvantage when it comes to basic movements. 
when you take away their claws, they become significantly worse. Um, a lot of times, these animals are unnecessarily euthanized uh, because of lack of understanding of the condition. Um, and Mr. Wiggles, actually the guinea pig, he was almost euthanized uh, because the veterinarian who was treating him couldn't figure out what was wrong. Um, and we'll go over that later on in the presentation with uh, misdiagnosis. Um, so how do the animals feel? Other than an increased chance of pain from accidental injuries, from falls or other uncoordinated movements, these animals usually don't suffer at all. They can't, they're, they're not in pain because of this condition. Um, they might, let's say, you know, if a cat is climbing on a cat tower and it has this condition, it's more likely to fall off of that cat tower than a normal cat would be and it could sustain an injury from that. But um, as long as proper care is taken to uh, basically kind of make sure that their handicaps are met, um, these animals won't even understand that they have a disability. They just think that it's normal life. Uh, inner ear infections and cerebellar hyperplasia. So the symptoms can look the same and can lead to a misdiagnosis, which is actually what happened to Mr. Wiggles and also actually what happened to uh, one of my cats, Princess Leia. Um, so sometimes treatments can even continue for months before a proper diagnosis is made. Uh, in the case of Mr. Wiggles, uh, he was a baby guinea pig that was at PetSmart when I worked there last year. Um, and he went to the vet because he what he is his head was tilted and he was moving weird um, and he wasn't able to you know interact with the other guinea pigs in a normal way um, and when they took him to the vet the vet thought oh he has an inner ear infection that's causing a balance issue so he was actually treated for about six months uh, for an inner ear infection which if many of you know those don't take six months to treat um, but the treatment just kept coming, and then at the end of the six months, the vet said, I don't know what to do with him. Pet smart, you can't sell him because he's not a healthy animal. So the option is euthanize him or send him home with an employee. So I wasn't about to let him get euthanized. So I took him home, uh, and that's when I started doing more research about what could have been wrong with him. Um, and I found that cerebellar hypoplasia pretty much exact matched uh, what was wrong with him. Um, and then with Princess Leia, my kitten, she was actually a kitten that was brought in by a uh, client at the vet clinic that I work at. Um, she was just born in his barn. She wasn't actually his kitten, but he noticed that she just kind of rolled around. She couldn't stand up. She couldn't walk around, anything like that. And so he brought her in, and uh, the vet thought that she had cerebellar hypoplasia, um, but then with treatment, we actually discovered that she was getting a little bit better, which doesn't make sense with cerebellar hypoplasia because it's non-progressive. So then the vet took a second look, and uh, at this point, my wife had already talked to the uh, guy who brought in this kitten, and it had become our kitten. <laughs> um, so my wife and I were taking care of this kitten, and we noticed that it was improving which doesn't make sense with cerebellar hypoplasia. It was starting to get up. Um, it had actually even crawled out of the uh, um, little cage thingy that we had built for it in the bedroom. Um, and that didn't make sense with cerebellar hypoplasia. So upon a second look, the vet actually determined that it was an inner, inner, inner ear infection that was causing the disorientation with Princess Leia. And uh, we uh, treated the ear infection, and now she's a completely normal kitten. Um, so I, I've had misdiagnosis both ways with uh, the cerebellar hypoplasia. Um, and then right here, this is Mr. Wiggles. Um, he was an example of misdiagnosis, and he's also a great example of learning to cope with the condition. Um, when Mr. Wiggles first came into PetSmart, he could barely you know, get from one end of the cage to the other. We actually had to keep him in a very small container just because he could barely make it from the water to the food back to his hide. Um, now he's in a, um, it's about three and a half feet by two and a half feet uh, pin and he can make it all over there. He plays, he rolls balls around. Um, the only thing is he still doesn't move like a normal guinea pig does. 
Um, so here's a little video that'll kind of show you how he moves. Um, if you notice, he kind of bobs his head around uh, in really quick jerky motions. Um, and that's just because uh, he isn't very coordinated. So with a normal guinea pig, um, they don't usually move their heads around that quickly. Um, all the rest of the guinea pigs that I have, uh, they make more, uh, I don't know how to say, smooth intentional transition. movements. Smooth transitions. Yeah, smooth transitions. Um, he has gotten much smoother and more intentional with his movements um, as he's learned to cope with it. But uh, he, you can still tell, especially when you pick him up, that he's not very oriented. Uh, when you pick him up and he kind of loses the idea of what's up and down, he really freaks out. Do we have any questions about cerebellar Okay, you ready for questions? Questions or comments? Anybody have experiences with other animals that had it or besides the cats and guinea pigs? Okay, somebody had cat? Or? We just had some kittens that came into the shelter and like okay. we didn't know what it was. Well, we just knew that it basically looked like they were walking around like they were drunk. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. that's kind of what we described it to for our on staff veterinarian and she said that that's Yeah, what and she diagnosed that. So when you've got two diseases that present with the same clinical signs, you have to make what's called a differential diagnosis. And that's the sign of a good vet. You know a certain symptom, but you know there could be two or three things that end up causing that same clinical signs. And so it's the art of differential diagnosis. That's where you become a very good veterinarian. Prescribing meds and doing the routine vaccinations, that's all blase. It's the differential diagnosis. And I don't know if you saw O'Malley smelling Noah. Noah lives in a vet clinic. So he's got all kinds of smells. And did you feel O'Malley? Yeah, he was uh, checking you out 